Hey, it's Justin Harvey. Thanks for tuning in to the Anesthesia and Pain Management Success Podcast. With APM Success, we take a close look at important topics pertaining to business, practice management, personal finance, and careers for anesthesiologists and pain management physicians. We work hard to take your critical questions straight to the experts. Thanks for listening. Hello and welcome to episode 224 of APM Success. Happy New Year. You may have noticed that I took a month off and it's great to be back in the saddle. It's great to uh, be recharged and ready for a new year. I love New Year's as an opportunity to reflect, to express gratitude, to uh, consider life and ask big questions and uh, also enjoy time with family. I've been doing that in the last few weeks. I wanted to share a couple updates with our audience updates about the podcast and about APM Wealth, an idea for the new year. And then I want to close with a personal story today. With the podcast in 2023, uh, we hit cumulatively 250,000 downloads, which is awesome. So thank you to our listeners who have been telling your friends and your colleagues to check it out. On YouTube, we've got 700 subscribers. We've had a ton of awesome guests, been making some great progress as far as taking the information that we have here and sharing it with the masses. I'm grateful for the opportunity to do that and that people continue to still show up and check out the things that I and our guests have to say. If you've benefited from this podcast, I always appreciate when you let somebody know about it so we can continue to expand the influence of the education we bring to bear here. In terms of APM Wealth, this is the financial planning and investment management firm that I run <laughs> full time when I'm not doing podcasting. We're currently working with 62 households. This year, we brought on a new team member, Jen, who is helping with admin and ops. So we're up to three of us now, which is great to see the growth and awesome to see our clients' progress and the way that they have been able to set and achieve goals and move their families in a positive direction, move their practices in a positive direction. I am always gratified and feel lucky and blessed to do the kind of work that I do, working with people in a in an important facet of life, I think there's a certain way in which physicians can understand and relate to this whenever you are wheeling somebody into the OR or whenever you're doing a consult with someone there in the exam room. Uh, that's a time of vulnerability and a time where there's a lot of trust and where there's a lot of reliance on your professional skills. I feel really lucky and I deeply enjoy being able to use my skills to help physicians who are in the financial equivalent of those same circumstances. We're onboarding a few clients this month in January, but we're uh, bringing on new clients in February. So if you're interested in talking about investment management or financial planning, or if you're running a practice as a private practitioner, and uh, you've got questions about how am I, you know, quantifying if I'm making enough money based on the revenue or, you know, what types of strategic decisions should I be considering based on practice size and staffing and all that stuff, go to our website at apm-wealth.com. We'd love to set up a quick intro call with you there and see if it makes sense to um, work together in some compa capacity in 2024 and beyond. Coming down the next month or so for the podcast, I've got some great interviews uh, with some experts. We're jumping back on the train of anesthesiology and looking at the specialty specific questions there. Next week, you're going to hear an awesome conversation with Dr. Josh Lumley, looking at current employment and practice trends in anesthesiology and the implications for physicians, both in the short and long terms. After that, I'm talking to friend of the show, Dr. Brian Schmutzler, with uh, some important updates on scope of practice for different anesthesia providers, looking at physician anesthesiologists, as well as CRNAs and AAs, and how this breaks down across different regions of the country and implications for compensation, growth of the specialty, careers for physicians, etc. If you, dear listener, have other friends, colleagues, docs who are doing cool things that you want us to be able to give them a platform to share with the anesthesia and pain management communities, I always appreciate those kind of intros. So shoot me an email, justin on apmsuccess.com, and I would love to discuss getting them on the show. That's it for updates. Let's talk about tools for 2024. Specifically, you know, most of the listeners of this show are never going to be clients, but I do want to equip all physicians, anesthesia, pain docs, practice owners, etc. I, I want you to be well equipped for financial success, financial progress. And one of the things that has been reinforced to me, even in the last few weeks, even in a year when the stock market was, you know, way, way up, the S&P was up over 20%, tech stocks have been through the roof this year, which have been driving most of that growth. 
Um, I have still been getting outreach by concerned clients who are, frankly, being saddled with anxiety because of the news, because of the media, and because they don't really understand the financial relationships and incentives of media companies as it relates to financial information. So my idea for our listenership for 2024, it's really important to know about money. It's really important to understand how to build wealth. And it's really important to understand where to get the information necessary to do that. So what I would propose to you, dear listener, is make 2024 the year of turning off the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times finance section, marketwatch.com or whatever as a mechanism for understanding markets because you are much better served understanding wealth building, understanding investments by going to books and not newspapers, websites, or whatever curated feed Google is jamming into your brain whenever you swipe left on your Android phone for you Android users or Apple News or whatever. Those short-term bite-sized periodical type information delivery is really just designed to sell news, sell advertisements attached to that. And it's not really incentivized at all to bring you wealth in the long term. Books are where wealth <laughs> building insights are to be found. So there's a couple good books I want to recommend. The one that I give to all new clients, uh, The Psychology of Money, is definitely worth considering. In The Psychology of Money, Morgan Housel explores the behavioral, psychological underpinnings of financial success. And the way that we are hardwired as humans to make decisions that um, are good for trying to <laughs> survive in the bush, in the wild, but not good for trying to understand sophisticated financial markets and long-term decision-making around financial assets and growth and compound interest and all these uh, facets of financial progress that are not intuitive at all. So psychology of money is a great one to understand the hardwiring that we have and how we are sort of hamstrung biologically, but then you can work against that. You can build your life in a way that allows you to make progress. And frankly, I think a lot of what I'm saying about turn off the news, pick up a book is related to what you find there in the psychology of money. There's another one, investing specific, The Little Book of Common Sense Investing by John Bogle, the founder of Vanguard. That's a good basic investment primer. And then another one, Simple Wealth, Inevitable Wealth by a guy named Nick Murray. This is a self-published book. It's a little bit harder to find, but would be well worth your time for anybody understanding, seeking to understand long-term investing and having investments be a, a chassis to drive you towards financial independence. What are the key inputs that, that create that kind of success? That's been another one that I've given to clients over the years. So turn off the news, pick up a book, and 2024, you will be making intellectual progress that will serve your wealth building pursuits in ways that are going to be really valuable. Okay, finally, a personal story. So 2023, you know, <laughs> was an interesting year for me. My dad's mom, my grandmother, passed away at the end of January of 23. <clears throat> Only a couple days after that, my second son was born. And I was fortunate, <laughs> if you could call it that, to be able to uh, take a little time off, which I had earmarked, uh, which if we'll, we could call it, I guess, paternity leave. When you're self-employed and run a business, it's tough to take paternity leave in the traditional sense. But I did have a, a week, which I ended up spending flying back to the East Coast and attending my grandmother's funeral. This was a, an experience of emotional whiplash that I uh, have not encountered the like of in uh, most of my years. But it was, uh, it sort of uh, accentuated the bigger questions and the bigger things to consider in life and observing the circle of life and, you know, holding my new little baby in my arms as I was thinking about the legacy left by my grandmother, whom I really loved dearly and um, was pretty close to over the years. In the last few weeks, my father was closing out her estate, and I, uh, I got a modest check from Grandma Jerry, and uh, it was about $100 and change, to give you an idea. It was a, a token of her love and her consideration for her grandkids, and I was one of uh, 15 or so grandkids. And with it, my dad penned a really thoughtful letter in considering the legacy of his mom. And it was interesting for me to, at the close of the year, reflect on the one-year anniversary of my grandmother's passing, reflect upon my little guy's birthday coming up, his first birthday, and also on the, the legacy of my grandmother, which there's the financial expression of it, which was, you know, 150 bucks. 
And then there's the relational expression of it, which I was very gratified and blessed to consider being living in close proximity to a woman of such profound character. And in a unique way, uh, she was widowed when I was probably five years old. So she was young at the time. She was 60, I think. My grandfather was in the Navy and a steel worker and a Pittsburgh blue collar type who died of cancer very young. And my grandmother never remarried. And instead of being, you know, given to bitterness or living a self-centered life in the way that would have been understandable for people in her position. She lived a life of extraordinary generosity and, you know, was very middle class financially speaking, but gave profoundly of herself in terms of relational capital, of spending time, of caring for folks, of serving in our community, in our church. She was a woman of deep faith. She led Bible studies for young women in our church. She reached out to young women in need, single moms who were having kids where the dad wasn't part of the picture, even at the very beginning, and serving in organizations that were providing support for these single gals and sharing from her wisdom and her her heart of um, wanting to leave the world a better place than she found it. So this for me has been a, a, a most profound moment to reflect and to think about, you know, I'm a, now a father and I'm sure many of you listeners are family men or women. You've got kids, you've got financial stresses and strains. There's going to come a time when you're going to have a final bequest and th your legacy will be cemented. And there will be, yes, a financial component, but also a component of relational, emotional legacy. And I can tell you, being a recipient of profound generosity in terms of the relational and emotional component and seeing how invested my grandmother has been in our family and with all of the grandkids and all of her children and in her church community and in her geographic community, it's beautiful to be able to closely observe and have proximity to a life really well lived that leaves a beautiful example for those left behind. So as you're thinking about what this means for you, I'm just here to tell you <laughs> from this fresh reminder that I have had, there's so much more to legacy and so much more to life than just piling up money for your kids or your grandkids. It's great to be able to provide for your family and to leave them something when you go. But the most important things that you leave, this has been reaffirmed to me, they're not financial. They are the legacy of love and family culture and generosity in all the other ways. So something to chew on as you're thinking about what you want out of this next year. Thanks as always for continuing to come back to this podcast. I am going to continue to work hard to provide content worth listening to. Wish you all the best in 2024 and beyond. I'll talk to you next week. If you liked what you heard this week, head on over to apmsuccess.com, where you can find more content and free resources to help you build a successful career in anesthesia and pain management. If you wanted to leave a review in iTunes, I'd also really appreciate it. Thanks for using some of your valuable time to join me today on APM Success.